Welcome, everyone. So um, today we'll, we'll continue the meditations on the uh, sufferings of the, the happier realms, the general sufferings of the happier realms. Um, and maybe if we have enough time, we'll also look at the sufferings of, of the Asuras as well. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. We just begin by by bringing ourselves into this time and the space, settling our mind, putting aside whatever we were doing before. And we are we are waking up. We are eating, showering, walking, talking, whatever it was. We'll just put that to the side for a moment and we make sure our, our body's comfortable that we have a comfortable seat our back is as straight as possible Just comfortable enough that we can try to stay in the same position for about 30 minutes. And maybe we can think about our motivation for meditating on Lam Rim or why did we choose to join this meditation this morning? Maybe it is to, to find some peace and happiness. Maybe it's to develop our minds, to find answers, to understand. Or maybe we're going through a difficult time or um, we have friends or family that are going through difficult times and we want to create some positive energy, some positive karma that we can dedicate to them, to that situation to help alleviate. So there's all kinds of motivations and and the motivation is really powerful because without the motivation it's it's like 30 minutes of time that just passes and it doesn't have this set intention for the meditation practice. It's like a a bookend. So you have the the bookend at the the beginning, this end, intention, this motivation, and then at the end we we dedicate, and that seals this practice that we do together.
So whatever our motivation might be, we, we, we set it, we have it, we do it intentionally. <laughs> So in our session today, we're going to look at at least three different types of suffering. So we're going to look at the, the suffering um, that arises when we meet unpleasant things. The suffering that arises when we're separated from pleasant things. And the suffering that arises when we don't we don't get what we want so looking at the the first one the suffering of meeting the unpleasant so it's it's kind of like these sufferings we we talked about so um We have birth, aging, sickness, death, and they're unpleasant. And they wouldn't be that bad, in a sense, if we only had to experience them one time, right? A kind of difficult time, we get through it and wash our hands of it. But... Um, we're forced by the power of our defilements to undergo them constantly, again and again. So it's not just a one-time thing. It's a... It's a It's completely repetitive. And if we could fast forward the the speed of time or speed of life, you know, it would be we'd be going through this cycle on a on a daily basis. The pain of birth, the pain of aging, the suffering of sickness, and the suffering of death. And we see that sometimes there's some smaller organisms that have shorter life cycles, maybe three years, maybe a few months. Maybe there's even something that goes through a life cycle in a day. I don't know. But in fact, there's all kinds of um, unpleasant situations. Situations that we don't desire, but um, we're still subject to them. For example, experiencing physical pain or, or mental illness or mental distress. being deprived of our possessions, being deprived of our friends, of our country, um, or even our country being harmed. Which could be a, a physical war, or it could be um, other political actions or limitations or financial sanctions. And if our um, country is suffering from, from war, then our, 
our family is afflicted by um, that conflict. There's probably quarrels. There's um, individuals suffering of pain and disease. And all of this happens beyond our wishes. We don't wish it to happen, but it's happening. So these troubles tend to weigh us down, they make us confused or depressed. But this is it. This is the the fundamental nature of our samsaric existence. That's the nature. So understanding this, we should um, we should realize how this samsaric existence is completely unsatisfactory. So then we can we can turn and we can look at this aspect of the suffering of separation from the pleasant. So when when something's nice and then we're we're cut off from it, we're separated from it. So we can think about when we're with a a group of friends or our family, our partner, children, um, people we like. You can say it like that. And then we have this wish to, to be with them forever, to always have this moment. And we... We go to great lengths to, to do everything to avoid the separation from these um, people we like, as friends and family. So we try to make the um, togetherness last forever. But the, the separation, it, it, it has to come. So we would, we like to always be together with our wife and children, our husbands, our brothers, our sisters. But um, conditions arise and they force us to separate from them.
It could be that someone passes away, someone uh, moves away, um, or there's a a conflict that creates division between the people. So there's this um, this element or this um, result of separation is is going to come in one form or fashion. Or maybe um, we live in a very pleasant country or uh, a, a nice neighborhood. And we don't want to leave. But um, somehow we are, we're forced to go elsewhere. We're not. We're not allowed or permitted to stay. And so you might think that um, I can try to avoid uh, the suffer uh, the separation, right? I can do uh, lots of things to make it stable and not deteriorate. And maybe it might be so, right? Um, we might be able to retain the the family, retain the the friends and the family, uh, retain our our place in our country, our neighborhood, and all the pleasant aspects that come with it, right? But at some point, we're going to die, and then that separation is going to come. So this is the, the nature of our existence in samsara. And then we have this um, this kind of third segment of this division of suffering, uh, the suffering of seeking what uh, what we wish for, what we want, and and not being able to obtain it. And I think in our modern world, we have lots of examples of this, whether we're looking across the internet or we go into any shop or store. Um, there are so many things. And all of them saying that they they want me to take them home.
And those are just the, the physical things, but we also have wishes or um, experiences that we're searching for. We have, we have kind of both of those. We have this uh, wish for possessions and not getting, getting any of them. Um, we wish for uh, work or a job and we don't find one. Um, we wish to accomplish something, but it doesn't happen. So if we can think of uh, a farmer who's got this vast land and um, works in the fields and the farmer's uh, wishing for this uh, good harvest and does everything in his power to choose the right seeds, plant them at the right time, give them high quality water, fertilizer, nurture them, protect them. But the good harvest doesn't come. Or maybe the example that one gets married, hoping to raise a prosperous family, but it, it also doesn't work out. Maybe the... Um, Maybe the uh, the couple don't uh, get along and they have to separate or they're confronted with many obstacles, making life very difficult and prosperity never comes. And so, you know, people, they, um, they try to make these accomplishments and achievements and it, uh, it doesn't fruition. It doesn't come together. And they become depressed or, um, delusional maybe they even kill themselves all through this frustration of not um, being all being able to obtain what what one wishes for what what one strives for i mean even meditators they also decide to to practice in order to achieve certain realizations, right? And then many times they're unable to meditate for various reasons. They don't have a, a good place. They have disturbances. They struggle to and follow the instructions. They become depressed. They uh, strain too much. They push too much. And then they can get uh, illness of the winds, uh, the lung illness that we hear about a lot. So 
So even the meditator is striving and doesn't get what he wants. And then, um, not only do we fail to meet our aims, our goals, our aspirations, but situations we don't want, they fall right on top of us all the time. So I have to understand that this this is uh, this is the nature of samsaric existence. That's it. There's no uh, there's no true state of happiness in samsara that we can uh, call satisfactory. So these sufferings, um, these human sufferings, we can experience them directly, but um, but the other sufferings we we talk about, we um, we don't ex um, we don't experience at the present moment. So we just have to imagine. Have to understand how they're described. So, having made these contemplations, we uh, we dedicate and we, we seal the merit that we created um, from our intention, through our contemplation, through our dedication. And we can dedicate and seal this with emptiness. So, due to all the the past, present, and future merits collected by me and all the merits of the three times collected by numberless Buddhas and numberless sentient beings, which are completely empty of existing from their own side. May I, who am completely empty of existing from my own side, achieve the state of full enlightenment, which is completely empty of existing from its own side, and lead all sentient beings who are completely empty of existing from uh, their own side to that state, which is completely empty of existing from its own side, all by myself alone, who is completely empty of existing from my own side. Thank you, everyone.